Hello, my name is Jeff Heaton. In this presentation, I am going to show you some of the neural network types that NCOG can use. This is also just a general presentation on neural network types, and these are not necessarily types that have to be used with NCOG, although these are the types of networks that NCOG comes with built-in support for. We'll begin with the feed-forward neural network. The feed-forward neural network, also called the perceptron, is one of the first types of neural networks that was introduced. Here you see a diagram of the feed-forward neural network. This diagram is actually a screen capture from the NCOG workbench. Using NCOG, you can create neural networks such as this and graphically edit them. Notice the feed-forward neural network. This network has three layers. It has an input layer, an output layer, and a hidden layer. You can also have two hidden layers you see in this neural network. Basically, data is flowing through to the input layer Features are being recognized by the hidden layers and output is flowing from the output layer. The feed-forward neural network is useful for recognizing patterns that can be fed into its input layer. We'll also look at another type of neural network called a self-organizing map or a SOM, S-O-M, or a Conan neural network. Here you see a diagram of the Conan neural network. You'll notice that there are just two layers. There's an input layer and there's an output layer. It works very similarly to a feed-forward neural network, and a feed-forward neural network doesn't have to have a hidden layer. It can simply have an input and output layer just like this neural network, except the sum, generally the output layer is a winner-take-all neuron. One of the neurons in the output layer will recognize the pattern better than the others, and it allows that one to win. That is the information you get back from the neural network. One thing that's different about the self-organizing map compared to the other types of neural networks is that data is fed into it usually in a lattice sort of way so that neurons, input neurons that are near each other will react similarly or at least more similarly than those that are further apart. This means that a neural network using the self-organizing map topology can be used for things such as optical character recognition or image processing. It's modeled in some ways after the human eye and the way the retina works, so it is particularly adept at recognizing visual sorts of patterns. The next neural network type that we'll look at is the Hopfield neural network. You'll see a diagram here of the Hopfield neural network. Notice there's just one layer, but notice the arrow. The Hopfield neural network is recurrent. That layer, the single layer which acts as both the input and the output layer, is connected back to itself. Anytime there is a loop back in the neural network, it's referred to as a recurrent neural network. The Hopfield neural network is one of the most simple forms of recurrent neural networks. You present it with a pattern, which is the number of input neurons, and it outputs a pattern which has to have the same number of input neurons, or as the number of input neurons. If you presented four numbers into the neural network, you're going to get four back because that's the way the Hopfield neural network works. There is not any differentiation between the input and output layer. Hopfield neural networks are used generally for pattern recognition. When the Hopfield neural network recognizes a pattern, it echoes that pattern back to you. If you give it a pattern that it was never trained with, then the Hopfield neural network is going to echo back the pattern that it was trained with that most closely matches the pattern that you gave it. Another type of neural network is recurrent neural networks, or more advanced forms of recurrent neural networks than the Hopfield neural networks. NCOG by default supports two different types of recurrent neural networks. It supports the Elman and the Jordan types of neural networks. Here you see a diagram of the Elman neural network. We'll take a look at this one first you'll notice that it has three layers. There's other forms of this where you put in additional hidden layers, but the key point to notice is there's an additional layer near the hidden layer. The hidden layer is feeding to this extra layer, which is called a contextual layer. This contextual layer basically takes the output from the hidden layer and then feeds it back into the hidden layer on the next run of the neural network. This forms a short-term short memory. Neural networks have long-term memory, which is 
the very connections between their layers, but a short-term memory which is cleared after the neural network is persisted and not used for further patterns is what the context layer provides. As you present patterns to the Hopfield or to the Elman neural network, it is going to learn those patterns and expect them in sort of the same order that you gave them to them in the first place. This makes the Elman neural network particularly useful for temporal or time-based neural networks. It's receiving data and it is particularly adept at predicting the data because it remembers some context of what the order of data was presented to it. Whereas a feed-forward neural network, you're simply giving it a bunch of training sets and the order that the training sets were presented are not important. Another type of neural network that we're going to see is also a recurrent neural network and this is called a Jordan neural network. This is somewhat related to the Elman neural network except that the context layer feeds from the output of the entire neural network and then sends its output to the hidden layer. It has a lot of the same uses as the Elman neural network has because it has the short-term contextual memory. It's just that it's hooked up a little bit differently and this allows it to be used for different sorts of problems than the Elman might be used for. The Jordan neural network initially was used for robotics processing and controlling motors, which is also a temporal sort of activity because the order in which the inputs come in is very important as you are controlling these small motors. We can also apply recurrent neural networks to other types of neural networks like we saw. For example, the self-organizing map. There is something called an RSOM, which is a recurrent self-organizing map. This allows the self-organizing map to take on this sort of short-term memory or temporal processing that the Elman and Jordan neural networks had. This allows it to be used with temporal processing. It works the same way as a normal self-organizing map and that one neuron is going to win above all of the others and that one neuron signifies what the self-organizing map has classified the input as. Like the regular self-organizing map, it's used as a classifier. The last type of neural network that we're going to look at in this video presentation is a radial basis function neural network, an RBF neural network. These are based on radial basis functions, the most famous of which is the Gaussian function. You can see the Gaussian function here. It's basically a curve. It's used a lot of times when you want to statistically group data so that the center portion is the largest amount of data. This allows you to group the data in statistically meaningful ways. For example, grading curves are often used on this sort of a curve. You want the majority of the students to have C's and decreasingly fewer to have B's and D's and then even fewer to have A's and F's. Several Gaussian functions can be used together to approximate the curve of a function and this is used to allow the RBF to recognize patterns that could not be recognized as easily with the feed-forward neural network. These neural network types are all supported directly by NCOG and the diagrams that you saw were my creation of these neural networks using the NCOG workbench. You can also use these building blocks to create other types of neural networks as well. These are some of the more common patterns in neural network programming and this video gave you a quick overview of what each of them are and what they're used for. If you would like to experiment with the NCOG workbench and the NCOG API for Java and C Sharp, you can download it from www.ncog.org. It is a LGPL open source project and I hope you will take a look at it. We will have future videos also explaining other features of the NCOG Neural Network API. Thank you.